In just a minute, we're going to talk about differentials. But before we uh, get into that topic, let's actually motivate the topic of differentials just for a minute, talking about tangent lines for a second. Um, you'll recall earlier in Calc 1, when we were studying tangent lines, one of the things we discovered was that tangent lines can be used to approximate a function locally around the point of tangency, uh, meaning that if the slope of the tangent line matches the curve, which it does, then rather than plug in x values around the point of tangency into the original function, which could potentially be really, really ugly and really, really nasty, you can plug them instead into the tangent line, which is simply y equals mx plus b, very, very easy, and get roughly the same y values. Because if, if you look at a graph here, uh, you'll notice that um, the tangent line and the actual function run side by side for, uh, for a good ways around the point of tangency. Now I do understand as you leave the point of tangency, you know, that error does start to grow and then it's not a usable approximation anymore. But as long as you're hanging out pretty close to the point of tangency, you can use one or you can use the other. Now, one way that we can describe this idea of um, approximations using tangent lines is by using these things called differentials. And that, that's kind of the motivation of the topic here, talking about differentials. So let's get into this topic now a little bit. You'll recall, again, talking about derivatives, um, that you can express a derivative as dy dx. That's the derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, or you could express it as f prime of x if your function was y equals f of x. You know, you could say dy dx on the left side equals f prime of x on the right hand side. So that would be like your original curve. Now, if that's the derivative, then uh, as long as dx is not zero, as long as the differential of x is um, not zero, then you can multiply this um, dx term to the right hand side and create another equality dy equals f prime of x dx. Now, just the dy alone, just the dy, that's known as the differential of y. Um, on the other hand, you have dx, right? That's the differential of x. The dx, the differential of x, is an independent variable, which means it doesn't depend on anybody. We choose the dx. We choose the margin or the change in x. And then the dy follows depending on what your choice of dx is. So again, you have this idea of an independent and dependent variable. That's what these, these differentials are. Um, now, I'll go ahead and forewarn you. This topic is probably one of the more confusing ones in, in Calc 1. So this might be a video that you might have to replay a couple of times to really digest everything I'm saying. Because uh, at first, you know, hear of it, it's, it's kind of confusing, at least in my opinion it is. Um, let me see if I can explain this idea of a differential graphically. So uh, I kind of blew up that earlier picture here. So we have a curve and then we have a tangent line here. And uh, I'm going to have these two notations. Now this isn't the differentials. This is delta x and delta y, which you might recognize that as uh, rec recognize those guys from like a biology class or a chemistry class. It simply means change in. So delta x would be the change in x and delta y would be the change in y. Let's start with the change in x. If the, here's your x value, then the change in x between it and another point, this distance here could be expressed as delta x. That's the change in x. Matter of fact, you might even remember that notation way earlier when we did um, limits or the limit definition of a derivative. You had the uh, limit as delta x goes to zero of f plus delta x minus f of x all divided by delta x, that difference quotient thing. It's that same change in x that we, we were talking about then. Now, you could also say the change in x as dx. So that differential of x and the delta x, same thing, exact same quantity, simply the change in x. Now, uh, look at the graph here. All right, look at the graph. You have uh, the orange line, which is the function, and then you have the uh, yellow line, which is the tangent line. Now, there's actually two different changes in y. All right, so pay, pay close attention here. You have the change in y from the original point to the y value on the tangent line, or you have the change in y from the original y value to the new y value on the 
function. These will be different y values. The change in y on the um, yellow line, on the tangent line, that's dy. That's the differential of y. The change in y value between y values on the original function is called delta y. This point of tangency is on both. It's on the original curve and the tangent line. Now, let me stop right there for a minute and see if I, need, see if I can explain that a little bit. Why is this dy as far as being on the tangent line? Well, if you, you know, you'd probably notice you can very naturally make a right triangle here, right? Um, look at this right triangle I just highlighted. What's the base of the right triangle? Well, it's dx. And so what's the slope of this yellow line? Would you not agree that it would be dy over dx, right? Rise over run. And so you get the slope of the tangent line. You get the slope of the tangent line, right? Back here, dy dx is the same as the derivative of the original function, right? Look, look at the tangent line. This point of tangency, that's its slope, dy dx, rise over run. Now the change in um, height between the point of tangency and the next y value actually on the curve, well, that would be delta y. That would be the change in height delta y there. All right. So, um, so that's graphically the difference there. Now, here's the key observation that's driving this whole discussion. Um, it's going to be very important to realize that delta y is actually very difficult to find. If, if this function, if this f of x function is really, really nasty, the only way to find the true change in y value, the true delta y, is to find this y value, literally find this y value, and then subtract them, right? Uh, this is the only way to do it, to get the exact perfect change in height. Now, what we're gonna try to do, though, is use the dy to approximate what that actual uh, change in height is. And it turns out using calculus, the dy is very easy to find. So um, how do we do that? Well, this, um, this equation right here, we have, equation, we have a, a formula for dy. It's f prime of x dx. It's, it's actually very quick to compute as you'll see in an example in just a minute. So again, the main observation to notice is that at least locally, at least around x, the change in height for y, delta y, is roughly the same as dy. Is there some error involved? Yes, a little bit, but usually not too much. This error grows as you leave the point of tangency. Um, you can see how this, this thing starts to separate, but at least, you know, in a, a little area, a neighborhood around x, um, this dy and the delta y are usually pretty darn close to the same thing. There's just a small little gap between them. All right, now, what on earth are we gonna be using this stuff for? Well, one of the, I guess, probably most popular things that we use differentials for is that approximation stuff I was talking about at the beginning of the video. So uh, one of our main goals using differentials is to approximate functions around what we'll call nice x values. Now, what, what do I mean by a nice x value? Well, if you're gonna use the square root function, for example, what would be a nice x value to plug in the square root function? You, you would like to plug in a number like nine, right? Because you can take the square root of nine. Would you like to take the square root of 8.7? Probably not. How about 9.2? No, thank you. So you have nice x values, and then you have values around that. Okay, now let's let's think about this, and I'll try to tie this back to the graph here. All right, um, what what does this notation mean? Well, I'm going to evaluate a function. If the nice x value is called x, then when you add a small change in x, you're moving away from the nice value. So, for example, if the, your original function was the square root function rather than taking the square root of nine, that's the square root of a, a nice x, how about nine plus 0 0.2? Do you see how taking the square root of 9.2 is not that easy? It's not, not a very nice value? Well, we would like to do it anyway. We wanna figure out what this is, but we're not gonna find the exact value of the square root of 9.2, we're gonna find an approximation. Now, how do we do that? 
Well, looking at this picture here, if you wanted the, uh, the next y value, if you wanted the next y value, what you could do, let me erase some of this gibberish here, okay, is um, you could start by finding the nice y value around 9.2 or whatever it is, so let's say 9, and then you could add just what the change in height would be to get to exactly your uh, your your point that you're looking at. So uh, with the square root function, I know this isn't a square root function, so this is kind of a bad graph. But if here's 9, and that's your nice x, then um, you could just consider the change in x to be just 0.2, right? Just 0.2. Okay. So to get the y value at the uh, ugly x value, where you've added a small quantity or taken a small quantity away, you can find the y value at the nice point plus the change in y, right? And just adjust for any differences there. Sounds good in theory, very, very hard to do in, in um, practical purposes. Again, because it goes back to you can't actually find delta y um, without actually knowing what this y value is. So that kind of defeats the purpose. Aha, but here's where the um, slick observation comes in. Do you remember this approximation here? The actual change in height can be approximated by dy, by, by that differential of y. In other words, by the tangent line. So notice I'm going to change the equal sign to an approximation symbol and I'm going to take the delta y out and replace it with the dy. Now why would I do that? Because I just turned this into an approximation. The dy turns out is actually very very easy to find. Now why is that? Well I said it earlier we actually have a formula for dy. It's f prime of x dx. That's the differential of y. So what you can do is you can take the dy out and replace it with f prime of x dx. Now why is that easier? That's a good question because it looks longer, not shorter. Well, this derivative function is evaluated where? Is it evaluated at the ugly x value, x plus delta x? Nope, it's evaluated at the nice x value. See, it's just evaluated at x, not x plus delta x. Um, to really appreciate this or to wrap your mind totally around this, uh, you, you're really just going to have to see an example. So, um, so let's, let's close out this video with an example here. So let's say we want to take the square root of 24.27 without a calculator, well, other than just basic arithmetic, not, not to actually do the square root of 24.27. That sounds really, really tough. I have no idea what this value is going to be. Um, I know it might be around 5 because I know the square root of 25 is 5 and that's close to 25, but um, that's not good enough. So what operation is being done here? Well, obviously square root. So our function is going to be the square root of x. Now look at this number. What's your nice x value around 24.27? It would be 25, I think. I would not mind taking the square root of 25. Now, if your nice x value is 25, then what's the change in x between our x value and the, the one in question? Well, it's 0 0.73, 0 0.73. However, 24.27 is 0 0.73 less than 25, not more. So the delta x will be negative 0 0.73. Notice that it's negative since this quantity is under 25. Now, uh, one thing we're gonna need in our formula here is the derivative of f. Basic derivative rules, you could do this on scratch paper, it would be 1 over 2 root x. 1 over 2 root x. So now if you want the y value um, at an ugly x value, x plus delta x, let's do it. So here we go. This will be the square root of not 25 but 25 minus 0.73 in other words, 24.27. This should be approximately what? Well, the square root, that's your function, the square root at the nice value. So we'll take the square root of 25. Okay. Now, if I stopped right there, you can kind of see what's going on here. See, this is the meat of your answer. The square root of 24.27 obviously is pretty darn close to the square root of 25. What this guy's job is here at the end 
this is what you might call fine tuning. This is getting it very, very precise based off of that tangent line. Okay, so I'm going to take plus 1 over 2 root 25. But what's the square root of 25? Well, it's 5 times dx. But now what's dx? Well, dx is the change in x. But if you remember, that's the exact same thing as delta x. So times negative 0 0.73. Plug and chug, do a little algebra here. Square root of 25 is 5. 1 divided by 2 times 5 is 1 tenth. 1 tenth of um, 0.73 is 0 0.073. That's a tenth of that number. And then 5 minus 0 0.073 would be 4.927, if I did that math right in my head, 4.927. Notice, no calculator. We did all that pencil and paper. Um, this should be pretty darn close to the square root of 24.27. Now, I found that quantity without the aid of a calculator, just using differentials. Differentials help me find that value. Now, let's see how good we did. Let's see how good we did. Let me get my calculator out. And let's see, what is the square root of 24.27 exactly? Let's see here. Um, let me cut this out. Paste it on my other screen. Okay, the actual quantity, the actual quantity is 4.92646. Pretty good, pretty good approximation. Yes, that's an awesome approximation. And I mean, it's accurate to the thousandth decimal place, or actually, uh, exactly accurate to the hundredth decimal place, but rounded uh, is very, very accurate. 4.927 versus 4.92645. Um, so I, I, I just show you this basic example just to show you that you can evaluate difficult quantities using differentials or at least approximating them without any calculator at all. So it's an awesome technique. Uh, I think it's very cool doing this stuff and finding these things without a calculator. And it's all thanks to differentials.